様。この度はオンデマンド動画プログラム聞こえの未来をご視聴いただきまして、誠にありがとうございます。この動画プログラムは、茨城大学教育学部障害児生理学研究室とオーティコン補聴器が共同主催しています。この動画は全部で5回シリーズで配信いたします。雑音化とか反響が強い聞き取りが難しい環境では聞くのを諦めるって声をよく聞きます、うん、で我々の聴覚システムは非常に優れていて不要な音とそうじゃない音を聞き分けて必要な音のみに集中することを無意識に行っていますが聴覚障害があるとそれらが難しくなってしまいます、うん、で今回の動画ではそれらの困難さを解決するためのテクノロジーについて紹介してもらいたいと思いますタバル先生ありがとうございましたそれでは皆様第4回動画「思い通りに補聴器をコントロールしたい」をどうぞお楽しみください。So when I went to Eric's Hall, the your colleagues were conducting an experiment in which someone was wearing some special glasses and listening to sound from the various speakers. Mm -hmm. Or the、uh, looking at the multiple people talking to each other. So, what was that all about?、Um, that's a very interesting experiment where we're trying to figure out if we can tell、uh, by a combination of looking at eye movements and also electrodes in the ear canals、mm -hmm. um, where someone is paying attention to.、Um, the reason that might be useful is、uh, if. Hearing aids in the future could discover for themselves who you are paying attention to in a room.、Mm -hmm. They could focus the sound on, on the person that you want to attend to and kind of suppress the sound、mm -hmm. from, from around other people.、Mm -hmm. So you could imagine you're sitting at a dinner table,、uh, you have someone to the left and someone to the right, and someone in front of you. You're trying to communicate actually with the person on your right. Um, and ignore the other people or, or concentrate mainly to the person on your right. Current hearing aids focus most of their sound beam onto, the, per, onto whoever's in front of you.、Mm -hmm. um, in that kind of situation, current hearing aids、uh, could be actually not helpful if you're trying to listen to someone to the right because they'll amplify the sound.、Mm -hmm. That's coming from where you don't want to listen to.、Mm -hmm. So, we're trying to work towards finding out if we can measure where someone pays attention to.、Mm -hmm. um, so, that's what that experiment was that,、mm -hmm. that you saw. Okay. So, I often heard that、uh, many, yeah, many hearing impaired people、uh, say that、uh, they have no problem in quiet condition, but、uh, have difficulty in noisy. Uh, conditions.、Uh, so, will these features be including in hearing aid in the future?、Uh, I hope so,、mm -hmm. yeah. I think if, if we can、um, amplify the person that you want to hear and suppress the sound、mm -hmm. from, from sources that you don't want to hear,、mm -hmm. then that should help this、mm -hmm. situation.、Mm -hmm. um, that ability is still. Quite some way off though.、Um, we're still doing quite basic research to discover how to determine where, where、mm -hmm. you're paying attention to.、Mm -hmm. Oh, so cool. So I'm looking forward to the future of hearing aids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank、mm. you. In the past, the hearing aids are not going to be able to do it. ですね、聞きたい音を拾う機能っていうのはすごく向上してると思うんですね。雑音を抑制したりとかそれから、えー、人の喋っている言葉を拾いやすくするっていう包丁機の機能としてすごく目覚ましく向上していると思います。それに加えて、えー、少し賑やかな場所とか少し距離のあるところを向いた時にそこを中心に音を拾える機能っていうのがあればすごく難聴者のリスニングエフォートだったりリスニングファティーグを軽減していけるんじゃないかなと思って期待しています
、うん、AI ですよね AI の進歩でこういった機能を今よりも向上させていけるっていうのは期待できることかなって思いますし面白い挑戦だなと感じます。ただ、えー、一方でやっぱり人の正常な聴力の人の聞き取りとは AI では差があるっていう、まあ、限界もあるんですよね。私どももちょっと開発に携わっていたりしますけれどもやっぱりの欲しい音を十分に取り込めるかっていうとそれは限界があるな機械学習の限界っていうのを感じているので全てを解決できるわけではないところから必要な支援は追加していくっていうことの重要性を認識してもらえてももらえたらいいのかなと思います。皆様いかがでしたでしょうか。第四回動画思い通りに補聴器をコントロールしたいをご視聴いただきまして誠にありがとうございました。第五回はオージオグラムだけでは不十分というタイトルで。これまでの動画のまとめについてハミッシュ博士と岡山大学片岡優子先生にインタビューしますどうぞお楽しみに I've been using hearing aids for I would say a year or more than a year When I have a minute I can hear better I can hear what my brother or sister is saying to me, my friends. The interesting thing about children with hearing loss is they simply don't know what normal is. They don't have a baseline for what they should be able to hear and what they shouldn't. My name is Andrea Pittman, and I'm an associate professor in the speech and hearing science program at Arizona State University. My role is to try to provide clinical audiologists with good working information to help their patients with hearing loss. In this study, we fit children with Oticon hearing devices,、um, and then we ask them to listen to speech in a 360 degree array of speakers. This is the room I was describing to you that has all of the speakers around us. It's called the Spatial Hearing Lab,、um, but they also call it the White Room because everything in the room is white. White, lots of white. It felt like I was in a cloud. There's like These little tiny, like square speakers, and then there's a little chair in the middle where I do the testing. Each speaker is either assigned to have a background noise, such as playground noise, or it's assigned to give out the target stimuli, which would be a word. Sometimes it'll do random words, it'll have it play from different areas, and I'll have to repeat it. That's definitely one of my favorites just because it sounds cool. Friend, palace. Rock. It's comparable to a child sitting in the middle of a classroom trying to hear around them when there's also some noise sources. Each participant in their hearing aids they had two different programs. So one program would have more sound intelligence enabled, and then the other program it would be disabled. What we were able to determine is that more sound intelligence did exactly what it was designed to do. When it finds noise in a region, it will reduce amplification there. But if there's speech there, it will preserve it. More sound intelligence was able to preserve that signal, and the brain was able to take advantage of it. Baby, ocean, dress. They're able to remember that speech better when the more sound intelligence is turned on. It's amazing what the brain can do with given a little bit of help. Oticon has been very good about developing adaptive features for all the hearing aid users, and especially for children. We've just made such great strides in hearing aids and hearing aid technology for children that they're doing really well.